five ministries this morning. Amen. The men will be in charge today. We're happy to have you all with us in the building Thank and all you, of Lord. you over the live stream. Thank you for joining us. Amen. Love alive, love alive, we thank God for love alive. So much love is inside, we thank God for love alive. Love alive, love alive, we thank God for love alive. So much love is inside, we thank God for love alive. Amen. 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 We'll be having a scripture by Brother James, and we'll be having a prayer by Deacon Chris. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I will be reading from Isaiah, the 52nd chapter, 53rd chapter, the 4th verse. Surely he has borne our griefs mm. and carried our sorrows. That's good. Yet he Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and mm -hmm. afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Wounded. He was bruised for our iniquities. Bruised. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Mm. And with his stripes we are healed. We, are, we were like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. Amen. enough to say thank you for your love and mercy and true love heavenly father in jesus name i pray amen amen amen, amen. amen. lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the lips 
misting skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us thus far on the way, Thou who has by thy might led us into the light. Keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places our God where we met thee. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hands may we forever stand true to our God true to our native land. Amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, say, it, say amen. Say, say amen. If you're happy Happy in Jesus Christ. 
Happy in Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Happy in Jesus Christ. Happy in Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Happy in Jesus Christ. When the Spirit falls on you, makes you shout hallelujah. If you're happy and you know it, say amen, amen. Somebody pray for me, had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed, I'm so glad they prayed, I'm so glad they prayed for me. The preacher prayed for me, had me on his mind, took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad he prayed, I'm so glad he prayed, I'm so glad he prayed for me. My mother prayed for me, had me on her mind, took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad she prayed, I'm so glad she prayed for, I'm so glad she prayed for me. The deacon prayed for me, had me on his mind, took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad he prayed, I'm so glad he prayed, I'm so glad he prayed for me. My mother prayed for me, had me on my mind, took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad she prayed, I'm so glad she prayed, I'm so glad she prayed for me. My sister prayed for me, had me on her mind, took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad she prayed, I'm so glad she prayed, I'm so glad she prayed for me. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. You can head on back to your seat. Thank you, man. Praise and worship. Glad somebody prayed for me. I don't know about y'all, but I'm glad somebody prayed for me. Amen. If we have a greeter in the building, let's get a greeter in the building so we can greet each other, greet one another. Do we have a greeter? Okay, okay, that means I'm the greeter. That means I'm the greeter. Amen, amen. Good morning, Love Alive. It's good to see each and every one of you today. I'm looking out, and I don't see any visitors, so I think we are all at home here together. So let's all greet each other. Let's all greet our family. Amen. Like we know how. Let's use our fellowship sticks. Let's give each other a holy hug, a holy kiss. Whatever you got to do, call somebody. Let's greet one another right now. Come on.
Amen, amen. It is tithes and offering time. I'm coming with the basket, so all of you, please prepare yourselves to give your tithes and offering. I'm going to have the people to my left coming first, and then there'll be those to my right. But let's all prepare to give our tithes and offering back to the Lord. Amen. And also your building fund, of course. We all should be given a building fund. So don't forget, like Sister Agnes said, you start early, then it won't be so hefty on you later. So come and give your offering. Thank you, Brother Cliff. Come on, come on. A cheerful giver, a cheerful giver. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this offering. We thank you for those that gave, Lord. Bless this offering. Upbuild it and multiply it, Lord. Bless all those who had it in their hearts to give, but maybe not the means, Lord. Bless them because you know the heart, Lord. We thank you for it right now, Lord. We pray that we can use this offering just to upbuild your mighty kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As the men are coming back for an A selection, come on, men, come on, men, come on, men. King Jesus is listening when you pray. King Jesus is listening when you pray. He's waiting to hear you, comfort and cheer you. King Jesus is listening when you pray. King Jesus is listening when you pray. King Jesus is listening when you pray. He's waiting to hear you, comfort and cheer you. King Jesus is listening when you pray. If I hold my peace, my Jesus will be coming for me one day. King Jesus is listening when you pray. He's got power in his hand, and he's taking me away. King Jesus is listening when you pray. If I hold my peace, my Jesus will be coming for me one day. King Jesus is listening when you pray. He's got power in his hand, and he's taking me away. King Jesus is listening when you pray. Oh, King Jesus is listening when you pray. Oh, listening when you pray. He's got power in his hand and he's taking 
when we away. King Jesus is listening when you pray. Oh, King Jesus is listening. Oh, listening when you pray. He's got power in his hand and he's taking me away. King Jesus is listening when you pray. King Jesus is listening. Oh, listening when you pray. He's got power in his hand and he's taking me away. King Jesus is listening. 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 When you pray. Amen. All good, Devin? Who's happy that Jesus is alive? Oh, who knows Jesus is their Savior? If you're happy and you know it, why don't you stand up on your feet and say so, that King Jesus is alive and well, and because he is alive and well, it is well with me. Amen? Hallelujah. King Jesus is a listening because he is alive. And I know it. He died, but he rose again. Amen. Got up out that grave, didn't he? With all power. And because of that, I can rise. Why don't we turn to Jeremiah chapter 9? We'll look at verses 23 through 24. Jeremiah which is after Isaiah, amen, before Lamentations. In the Old Testament, that Jeremiah now, amen. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, amen. Chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Amen. Amen. And the word reads, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exerciseth loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come before you to say thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for caring for us. We thank you for holding us. Now, Father, allow us to interpret your word, receive your word, allow us to follow the Holy Spirit. Allow him to make it plain to us that we might be good doers of your word. We thank you, Father, for your love. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for being with us, leading us on. It is in the precious name of Jesus that we pray, thanking you for this time that you have allowed, that you have ordained. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. And for a subject, we're going to use fit for duty. Fit for duty. Duty, amen. 
There are many occupations that require a certain level of fitness, amen. We see it with different athletic teams. If you're playing football, you got to have a certain level of fitness. Basketball, baseball, you name it. First responders, they got to have a certain level of fitness, amen. If you don't believe it, go to the doctor and have the doctor start asking you questions that you think they should know. Amen. Some things they got to ask you, but they shouldn't be asking you, should they take your temperature? Well, you think I should take your pulse now? They shouldn't be asking you things like that. They need to be fit for the duty at hand. And there are some occupations where they will help you get fit. Amen. In order to get fit, they'll have different training classes for you to take that you must pass. Until you pass them, you are not considered fit for duty. You don't have the option of saying, I don't want to do it. You must do the classes that are set before you that make you fit for duty. Now, I think one of the greatest groups that make you fit for duty is the military. Amen. Don't walk out on me, Brother Chris. You can help me. Amen. It's the military. Amen. If you are not in shape, they help you get in shape, amen, not just physically, but mentally, mentally because you have to know which direction to point your gun, amen, because sometimes you can get a little disturbed and you might want to turn around and have your gun pointed in the wrong direction, but they help you get physically and mentally in shape, and they teach you. I had a cousin tell me that they taught him how to tie a tie. I said, you had to learn how to tie a tie. I said, I had to learn the military way. I was like, good Lord. I knew about they teach you how to make your bed because, you know, we've seen that on TV. But they teach you how to march. They teach you how to carry things. And they train and drill you so that they can make sure you have learned and that it becomes not something for you to think about, but it becomes something that you do. See, it's one thing to think about what should I do. It's another thing to say, oh, this is happening. I need to do this. That comes through training. As a soldier in the army of the Lord, when was the last time you were evaluated? What is your fitness level? When is the last time that you submitted for evaluation? And I know what some of y'all are thinking, well, I submit to the Lord all the time. No, that's good. But I'm talking about when did you submit and say, hey, so-and-so, my brother, my sister, can you help evaluate me? I want to make sure that what I'm seeing is actually true. Because sometimes we have that trick mirror at home. You know that mirror we look in that tell us how great we are? But when people see us, we ain't as great as we thought we were. Amen? It's that trick mirror that we have at home. So when was the last time that you were evaluated? Are you a double agent? What's a double agent? That means I'm going right until I'm not, until it gets tough. Then I'm going to go to the left, and I'm going to go to the left until it becomes too painful. Then I'm going to try to come back to the center, but I don't know where the center is, and I stopped my fitness over here with the Lord because it got too tough. So then I came with Satan, but it became too painful, so I tried to stand in the middle, but the Bible tells us you can't do that. Luke 16 and 13, no servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. So you've got to choose where will you stand? Where will you stand? 
Jeremiah was fit for duty. It's only one thing. He didn't think he was. He really didn't. See, Jeremiah was a young man. Jeremiah was a special man. God told Jeremiah, you are the one. He told him in Jeremiah 1 and 5, he says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Jeremiah said, but they, they won't believe me. I'm just a boy. I'm just a boy. I'm young. Who will listen to someone so young? That was Jeremiah's reason for not accepting or questioning what the Lord has done. But what is your reason? Are you saying, surely you didn't call me, Lord, because I got low self-esteem? I was always told from the beginning it wouldn't be me. I wouldn't be the one chosen. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm not smart enough. I got bad history. I'm too smart for that job. I'm above that. That's too menial. Surely you don't want me. Yesterday I asked a man to do a task for me. And it was not a glamorous task. I said, can you go outside and pick up the trash? use his picker in this trash bag. And he was dressed pretty nice, like he is most of the time out of a magazine. And he said, yes, I'll do it. And he went. And he did it. Amen? I had another man tell me, hey, it disturbs me when I come into the house of the Lord and I look around and I see things outside that need to be picked up. I, I think we ought to treat the Lord's house looking a certain way. So that's why I don't mind picking up trash. I don't mind doing that which some people may look down their nose at and say, oh, that must be the janitor. Oh, that must be the trash picker up. That's all they can do. No, that's not all they can do. That's just what they are doing at that time. Because see, before the Lord can lift you up to a certain height, you got to begin. You got to start somewhere, and really what he's looking to see is, are you willing? Are you willing? Broken toys. Broken toys. What do you do with broken toys? Do you just throw them away, or do you play with them? Well, it's one thing to have a broken toy and know it's broken. And then you can use your imagination to envision that the toy is not broken and you can play with the toy. But it's another thing to have a toy that you think is working perfectly and then when you open it up, you see it's broken. You don't even know what to do. You become so upset because it's not what you expected. Broken toys. You know, Jeremiah had to tell the nation of Israel that they were broken. They were broken. That they were not fit for duty. And the Lord tells you the same thing. You are not fit for duty. But how do you change what the Lord is sharing with you? Does he leave you with you're not fit for duty and that's it? No, 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 no. He works on getting you fit. And the first thing he needs to get you fit is he needs some acknowledgement from you that, you know what? I'm not fit 
for duty. I belong not here, but over there. How do you know where you are? What's your litmus test to tell you if you are fit for duty? Hey, let me help you. If you feel like you fit in and everybody loves you, you're not fit for duty. If you feel like the world is attacking you on all sides and no matter the best you try, it seems like people just attack you every day, every hour. It feels like you're in a battle. Hey, you fit for duty. See, the Lord said, if the world loves you, If the world loves you, then you're not fit because they hated me. And if the world hated me and you're supposed to be like me, the world will hate you. So you've got to come to an acknowledgement of where you are. He told us, Jesus told us, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's Sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Amen? That's a hallelujah right there. That's a good news word. That you can be saved if you just endure to the end. So I don't want you to look anymore when you go in and you say, oh boy, here they come at me. They hating me. I want you to go in with some thanksgiving and joy in your heart. And say, I'm so glad that they hating me because if they hate me, I know I'm with the Lord because he loveth me. And because he loveth me, he will take me straight through to the end. But did you acknowledge where you are? You got to be evaluated. We got to see where you are so that you can be helped to be lifted up. Fit for duty. How can I get fit for duty? You got to get out of the way. See, there's something called an eye problem that we have. Let me give you an example. I was thinking, I want to do, I believe, I, you know, we have an eye problem. Every sentence begins with I, I, I. You got an eye problem. You need to throw the eye away. Amen? Get out of the way. See, when you get out of the way, you go from my wisdom to the Lord is omniscient. When you get out of the way, you go from my power to the Lord is omnipotent. When you get out of the way, you say, my wealth does not compare to what my father has. He has it all. You got to get out of the way. You got to ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and don't move until he leads you. It's hard standing still waiting on the Holy Spirit, when you believe like you fit and ready to run into the battle, and he says, no, nope, and he holds you. And you begin to think that, well, maybe I ain't hearing from the Holy Spirit. You heard from him. You just didn't like what he said. You've got to wait on him. Do you know that you are God's greatest workmanship? that you were created in Christ Jesus? Did you know that you were created unto good works, which God hath ordained that we, that you and I should walk in them? Did you know? Get out of the way. Get that eye problem. Let it be gone. Let it be gone. You've got to work. You want to be fit for duty? You've got to work. 
Now, you know one thing I like about the military that they do, which is kind of funny? They might have changed, but from what I used to hear from my friends, they never asked them, hey, would you like to run today? Hey, would you mind doing a few push-ups? I mean, if you get tired, you let us know, but do you think you could do just a few? Whatever you think is good for you, amen? My, my friends tell me, man, they was yelling, and I thought my name was a curse word. They had cursed at me so much. I said, what? He said, yeah. I said, well, can they call you out your name? He said, man, they can call you whatever you want. You better answer. I said, man, I can't do it. He said, it's not for everybody. I said, yeah, that's kind of rough. But the Lord doesn't do that. But he still calls you to a standard. And you've got to work on that relationship. You can't be sloppy with it. We're sloppy with it. I do it today and I won't do it tomorrow. That's sloppy. I do it later. I get around to it. Oh, well, I fell asleep. I'm sorry. Tomorrow's another day, Lord. I'll come back to you. If I can fit you in, let's see. Right now, my schedule is so busy, Jesus. Where can I put you on the count? No. No, you've got to work. Not only work when things are going well, but you've got to work when things are going what we might consider not well. How much do you got to work? You got to sweat. You got to sweat. You got to put in some sweat equity. You know, Jesus was working so hard in the garden before it was time for him to be betrayed that he was sweating drops like blood, thick drops of blood as he was praying. And he prayed for us. Why? Because he said something that we all like to say. Father, if it's your will, Get me out this mess. I don't want to go through with this. Let me be. But then he said, nevertheless, thy will be done. We need to brag on God. You know, we're not bragging on God enough. We like to brag on him when we get that check in the mail. We like to brag on him when we get a bonus. We like to brag on him when things are done that we've been waiting for. But I need some people that can brag on him and say, my God is so good to me. Not only did he bring me out of my afflictions, but he put things in order. How did he put things in order for you? He disciplined me. He disciplined me. He loved me so much that he disciplined me. He disciplined you? Yeah, he whipped me. Mostly he let me whip myself. He disciplined me. My God loved me so much that he humbled me. See, I thought I was all this. And he made me see exactly who I am. He humbled me. My God loved me so much that he chastised me. I don't hear people bragging about that. I only hear them bragging about new cars, new homes, new wardrobes. But they don't brag about the Lord chastising them. You know, have you, when was the last time you heard somebody say, God is so good, he whipped me. My God loved me so much that he just, he just told me all about myself. I would have quit, but he did not destroy me. He said, I just love you enough to tell you the truth. Why? Because you must be made better. 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 Good, better, better, right? Better. 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 Don't let it rest. Amen. Better. 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 Let your good be your better, and your better be your best. Better. Better, he wants you to be fit for duty so that when the time comes for you to run into battle, you're not looking for your helmet. You already got your helmet on. When the time comes, you already got your sword in your hand. How would you feel if a fireman came to your house to put the fire out and they said, man, we forgot the hose. 
we brought the truck, but we forgot the hose. You know, we haven't used this hose in so long, it might take a little while for us to remember. How would you feel if in your time of need, somebody came to you unprepared? They hadn't been drilling. They hadn't been training. You want somebody to come to you and look like they know how and then show you that I know what to do now. I've been trained for this. I'm ready to walk. And I'm going to start by telling you, I made a mistake. I was a mess. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Y'all saying, what? Forgive me? What you talking about? Don't you know that's the beginning of your training? You got to get right with the Lord. And how do you get right with the Lord? You get right with those that you have offended. You must come clean to the Lord. And most of all, we have offended the Christ. How have you offended him? You have offended him because he said, I've saved you. I've made you whole. I've made you righteous. And yet you're living an incomplete, unfulfilled, unrighteous life. You're living a life of sin. And he said, wait a minute. That's not what I had for you. You're fit for duty. I cleaned you up. I trained you. But you forgot everything that was taught to you because it wasn't consecrated to him. But thanks be unto God, he loves us. The Father loves us enough that he says, no matter how dirty you are, I am the agent that can clean you. My grace is sufficient. I can make you over again. You cannot sin where I cannot cover your sin. I can make you fit for duty. But the question is, are you willing? Are you willing? Are you willing to be humble? Are you willing to be disciplined? Are you willing to be chastised? Oh, I know you're willing to be blessed. I know you're willing to have a big bank account. I know you're willing for that. I ain't got to ask you that. But I want to know, are you willing to really accept all of his love that he has for you? All love. See, only an unloving person wouldn't discipline you or chastise you. That's not love. They would let you go into your own way. Continue with your eye problems till you met destruction. But it's a loving person that can grab you up. And say, stop what you're doing. Turn. Turn from that wickedness. I've met a lot of loving people in my life. Amen. Sometimes they just didn't know how to say things to me. And it took me a while to get through how they were saying it to the content that was coming out of their mouth. Amen. The howl had me distracted. Amen. The howl seemed like a threat most of the time when I was younger. I was like, good Lord. Am I being threatened so that I can become immune to that? But the Lord loves you. He wants you. But are you willing to be chastised? You willing to be trained? You willing to be disciplined? You willing to be made fit for duty? If you are, he says, come on, I got some great work for you. There's a field out there where the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. But with you, that's one. And if I got one and you get one, that's two. And then if the two of you get one, that's four. And then if the four of you get one, that's eight. We can multiply this thing. But are you willing? Are you willing to be the example to your friends, to your neighborhood, to your workmates? Are you willing to allow the Lord God to shine through you? Will you let God shine and his enemies be scattered? Or will you hold them down because you are ashamed? Don't be ashamed of God. The word tells us if we're ashamed down here, he'll be ashamed of us. But don't be ashamed of God. He loves you. And he wants you to be fit for duty. 
If you say, you know, I joined up, but I forgot that training program, and I'm not fit for duty. Well, that's the first step to acknowledge. And he can make you fit for duty. He will send you somewhere where you can be trained so that you can be fit for the task at hand, whatever the task is. He loves those who acknowledge, it's not me, I'm not ready. Those are the ones that he wants. It's those that think they are ready and they're not ready that he has a problem with. But he loves those that says, I'm ready to help you. He said, after all, those are the ones I came to. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, come to him right now. Get fit for duty. As much as God had to punish Israel because he's just, he told them, there is a way for you to come back. But you got to get to know me. You've got to understand who I am. Then you can come back to me. And you only do that by being obedient to me. It's that time. The doors of the church are open. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, come to him right now. Don't wait. Come to him as we stand up all over the building. Now is your time. Come to Jesus while you can. Be fit for duty. Get fit for duty. It's your time. We've been trying to do this thing in our own might, our own way, and it does not work. It just further confirmed that we had an eye problem. But let him give you good vision because he loves you. Take on his eyesight. That means it's no longer I, but it's him. It's all because of him that we honor him. Is there one that does not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior? Now is your time. Come to him while you can. While you can. Come to Jesus. If you say, I know him, I'm backslidden. He loves the backsliders. Just stop sliding back. You can do it. Just stop. Just stop. Just tell Satan, I ain't messing with you no more. Every time I mess with you, I'm getting messed up. I'm leaving you alone. I'm going back where I belong. I don't even belong over here. You don't even like me. All you're trying to do is kill and destroy me. I'm leaving you alone. I'm going back where they love me, where the Lord loves me. Come to Jesus right now. Once you come to him, be prepared to get fit for duty. You're going to go on the train. Hey, training ain't always fun and easy, but it makes you so much better. It makes you so much better. You know, when you go into training, you're going to have to learn how to do things his way, not our way, but his way. Come on to him now. Is there one? Is there one? Let us pray. Father, we come before you to thank you. We thank you for making us fit for duty. Help us, Father, to not give up on the training. Help us to be good soldiers. Help us to love you even the more. Help us to know that there is nothing that you have started in us that you will not complete in us. We thank you for completion. Now we got to walk through it. We don't run through it, but we walk through it. We walk through it following you. You lead us all the way. We thank you, Father. We love you. We thank you for caring enough that you gave us the greatest shepherd ever, Jesus Christ. And he paved the way. He said, this is the way. I am the way. Follow me. There is no other way. Follow me. We thank you. We thank you, Father, that he loved us enough that he said, hey, until I come back, I'm leaving you with the guide, the Holy Spirit, the comforter who teaches all things, brings all things back to remembrance. Follow his direction and you'll make it home. We thank you that you allowed the fit 
the beauty, the fitness to come. We thank you for your training, but we thank you for your love that comes in all forms. We thank you for all things. And now may the grace and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with these people henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say amen, 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 amen.